He didn't stray. He didn't feed into any of those temptations. Why? At the same time too, I'm there, okay? We're not feeding into our temptations. We're not walking this path alone. Blew my mind, it's like winning the lottery to me. But I was gambling. Because of technology, they want to get rich quick, but faster using technology. What's the old saying back in the day? What goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. What goes on in Vegas actually goes on YouTube. <laughs> what actually goes on in Vegas goes on social media. Have you ever been frustrated because many of the people that you have started a business with or people that you started investing with, and they're having a lot much more greater success than you are quicker, sooner, faster, and they're getting all the cars, they're getting their homes, they're getting the vacations, they're getting a lot of the things that they uh, I've been hoping to, that you've been hoping to do, and uh, next thing you know, they crash and burn, and they start, stop, or they go from rags to riches, riches back to rags, but you keep plugging along, man, you keep plugging along, but that process frustrates you, and you wonder why they get so much faster, sooner, quicker, and richer than you do, and perhaps this episode is for you, because I'm gonna share with you why faith-based millionaires never get rich quick. How? I'm gonna share with you seven Proverbs in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad Scripture Series, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. If you haven't done so already, we are on a journey to reach 150,000 subs. So if you haven't subbed yet, please click subscribe. Why? Because once we reach 150,000 subs, we're going to award a church, charity, or nonprofit on behalf of this YouTube channel, $5,000 to support whatever it is that they're doing, the church, that charity, or nonprofit. We want to give them a $5,000 check on behalf of you, this Seven Figure Squad community. So if you haven't done so, please click subscribe. All right, so let's get right into it. How come people out there seem to be getting ahead so much sooner, faster, quicker than you are, and, and understanding that you have wisdom, you got knowledge, you got education, you got all the tools, you're plodding along, but some people just may get success faster, they get their money faster, they get their next levels faster than you do, and you're wondering why. If you ever wondered that, I always did too as well. When I was in my 20s, getting out of the military, and I started my business, I always wondered, how come these folks, man, they're getting so much faster, sooner, quicker than I am? And I work just as hard as they do, and they do this, they do that, and granted, uh, I'm not perfect, because I'm gonna share with you throughout this video some of my mistakes when I did attempt to cut corners. And make a long story short, you see so many people right here in a comment section on YouTube videos, some fake accounts posing as us. I think a couple of them right, Ivan, are like a pinned as seven figure squad, some of them are alluding to be a fake seven-figure squad. And just to let you know that the only YouTube channel that's on here is a verified seven-figure squad uh, checkmark. So we may make sure you follow this verified checkmark after our YouTube channel name. Even on Instagram, I have so many people sending me messages, Matt, there's a fake account out there using your pictures. There's so many people out there using a fake account using your stories. There's so many fake accounts out there using your, 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 your bio and posing as you and they're trying to scam us into Bitcoin, they're trying to scam us into Forex, they're trying to scam us into cryptocurrencies or whatever. And so they're all out there, by the way. And if you haven't done so already, our team is watching this Netflix special called Money Explained, where Tiffany Haddish was narrating an episode about why people fall for get-rich-quick scams all the time. They're investing in real estate scams, real estate investment groups, scams, gambling, obviously, scam, courses you can buy, high-priced ticket items. It costs you $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 to, to buy somebody's knowledge or product or course to show you how to become a millionaire. Uh, people go into playing the lottery. Uh, uh, people say, hey, man, buy my coaching course, buy my consulting course. I will help you get to the next level. Again, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, so many other things out there to help you get rich quick, supposedly. But at the end of the day, it's a scam. And when, when you're looking at all these different things, there's so many different temptations out there because we're hurting the pandemic has caused many of us to think twice about our revenue, our income, caused, uh, caused us to think twice about our career, our business, caused us to see the different streams of income we can potentially make. And our guys are about to go to Las Vegas these next couple of days because we have an annual convention out there. And uh, we've got Mario Lopez hosting our conference. We've got Nikki Jamp doing a performance for us. We've got Iron Mike Tyson coming out to visit with our leadership group. So on and so we got Sebastian Maniscalco doing a private performance for us. Uh, uh, Frederick De Silva Illusions doing a private performance for us. But our guys who, many of them, came to our firm 
through the pandemic, what we call Zoom babies. They got birth to us because of Zoom. They've never been to a live event, let alone they've never been to Las Vegas. And Las Vegas just started opening back up a couple months ago. And we're warning our guys that this city of Las Vegas, as beautiful as it may look, the city of lights, they call it Sin City for a reason. But this city was not built because people won. The city was built because people lost. People lost their social security checks. People lost their retirement savings. People lost their homes. And, this, and that's what this, to me, that's what this city represents. It may not represent that to you, but to me, that's what it represents. You ever hear the saying, the house always wins? Well, if you're a believer, whose house are you living in? Who's the ruler of your house? There's a scripture that says, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Are you truly serving the Lord? Is it a house that you are truly building? Or is it the house of the, of the casino that you're depending on? So when you're looking at these things, is that the reason, big reason why I don't get one. By the way, guys, I'm not walking on no water. I remember in high school, because I knew no other way. It's all of what I knew. I remember in high school. And I hope you don't judge me for this, but I used to uh, take the bus. When I'm taking the bus, I used to take the, uh, the, uh, the track notes from the horse track because when I lived, we lived in the Berwyn, Cicero, Stinkney area, there's two horse tracks out there. It was Sportsman's Park and there was Hawthorne Park. And one of them was the horse race track that Al Capone bought because back in the day, one of the tracks says, hey, Al Capone and your crew, you're not coming in here. So Al Capone said, okay, listen, I'm mafia. I built my own track. So I built it right across the street from the track. He was not allowed it. Anyway, I'm taking the, the, the track guide in, in study hall in high school. I'd study the horses. I studied the jockeys. I studied what type of conditions these horses had the big, biggest probability to win in. And I'd cut track practice. And I'd go down and take the 10 bucks or 15 bucks or 20 bucks that I did have. And I gambled two bucks here, gambled two bucks there, gambled a trifecta here. One time I won a trifecta, I won a couple grand. Blew my mind. It's like winning the lottery to me. But I was gambling. You know what I realized about the whole process? It's feeding into me something, a desire that I can get something for nothing. And that's why people love the lottery. That's why people love winning free stuff because they can get something for nothing. And there's so many examples in the Bible. The God said, listen, if you want to earn something, if you want to earn something for me, you've got to work for it. You've got to be in alignment with God. You've got to be in alignment with me. You've got to be aligned with my principles, my commandments. I have an assignment for you, but your alignment is more important. Are you aligned with me, my brother and sister? Are you aligned with me, my son and daughter? Right? Are you aligned with all these different things you've got going on? Because deep down inside, we want to get rich quick. Deep down inside, it goes and feeds an area in us, which is human nature, which is laziness. At the end of the day, a lot of people just don't want to work for their money. And that's why there's a big difference between those who have money and those who are poor. And sadly, there are always going to be those who have money. And sadly, there's always going to be those that are poor. And when you look at Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 113, let's read this. Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 113, it reads like this. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. It goes on, so on and so forth. Please read this chapter, but you get the point. That there is a season for everything. There is a season for everything. The, the, the sad part is, people today, because of technology, they want to get rich quick, but faster using technology. How many times have you seen people say, hey, invest in this, invest in this, invest in this, and you run up that stock, or you run up that cryptocurrency, and all the insiders say, yeah, there they go. We've meddled with the market. And everybody's buying, it's buying, it's buying. Next thing people say, hey, is that good? Yeah, it's, it's rising, it's growing, it's, it's skyrocketing, it's going to the moon. And people buy it. And guess what? The insiders 
Like, aha, we got you. Boom, they start selling. They start selling. They start selling. They start selling. Because they bought it at a very low price. And you, without knowing being on the inside, you helped actually drive up the stock price. You helped drive up the cryptocurrency. You went to the moon, but you're not on the outside. You're not on the inside. Here's what the insiders do. They sell. They sell. They sell. They sell. They sell. They made their profit. They made their profit. They made their profit. And you lose. And that happens all the time in the markets. That's why here you've got to be able to go about your business with a spirit of discernment. And that's what faith-based millionaires have learned how to build and exercise, which is a spirit of discernment. You, it basically is a BS detector, okay? It's a spiritual BS detector. And so there is a season for all things. In other words, there's a season to plant, there's a season to cultivate, there's a season then to harvest, there's a season to consume and distribute, rinse, repeat. The sad part about it is, is once you harvest and once you distribute, everybody eats everything or they consume everything without keeping the seeds to the side to replant again once the uh, springtime comes around. And the reason why they don't have any seed to plant once the springtime comes around is because they consumed everything. They lived paycheck to paycheck and nobody taught them how to do that, nor were they looking for ways to stop living from paycheck to paycheck. Listen, I am no saint. I'm no pastor, I'm no preacher, I'm just a simple lay person in a church looking in the Bible and reading things that are, seem obvious to me. And these seven Proverbs, which King Solomon is known to write over 300, I'll just share with you seven of them that coincide with not getting rich quick overnight. Number one, treasures gained by wickedness has a negative consequence. Look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 2, it reads like this. Treasures gained by wickedness do not profit, but righteousness delivers from death. So check this out. It doesn't say that you can't get treasures by being wicked. You can get treasures by being wicked, but it says it doesn't profit. So in other words, you can get, you can get, you can get, but at the end of the day, when it all balances out, there is no profit. And if you continue that way and you say, you know what, if I'm going to find a, follow a wicked way and I flip and say, you know what, Lord, God, let me find a way that is righteous. And what does it say here? It says, if you change, righteousness delivers you from death. Let's look at another proverb here. What happens here, especially right now during the summertime? See, our guys are going to uh, our national conference during the summertime. People are going on vacation during the summertime. What happens if you don't gather? What happens if you're just sleeping and hanging out and chilling? You get sucked up in the... Uh, Sun times and beach times. What happens here? Proverbs chapter 10, verse 5, it reads like this. He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. And see, I, when people talk about spring break, I remember going to the Marines for the first year, 18 years old. I said, I'm used to spring break. You know, you have this, you have spring break, you work during the summer, summer job, you know, training camp for football. You have fun during the summer. But I didn't realize that it was leading me down a path of destruction because the prudent, they gather, they work. And what happens is when I decided that I chose to work during the summer when everybody's playing, guess what happens? When everybody's playing and everybody's sleeping in, I was working, guess what? I started being, building a righteous name. I started building something that everybody one day would be proud to be associated with because while everybody was sleeping, I was working, I was building, I was creating a name for myself. And you could be creating a name for yourself too as well. When everybody's playing, everybody's on the beach doing their thing, you are gathering, you are planting, you are working, you're making the most of your situation. And by the way, you do all these things when everybody's playing, we have a saying here, today I will do what others will not, to one day live a life that others cannot. Well, that's a proverb, okay? It's Proverbs, it's written by King Solomon, who is considered the wisest and richest king who ever lived. He ruled for 40 years and built uh, uh, massive tabernacles. He brought wealth and prosperity to his people. Let's look at another proverb here. What happens if you walk in shame or you walk in integrity? What walk do you want? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. It reads like this, whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. Listen, man, however you're making your money, whether it be through these things I just discovered that, that's been either 
By the way, I'm not saying that all real estate investing is scammy. It just, you just got to be discerning what real estate investment courses or Bitcoin courses or coaching courses are scammy. You just got to watch out for those things. But here, if you are walking in integrity, you should be walking secure. When I'm walking and building my business, I know I'm doing right by people. I'm not cutting corners. I don't ask to be paid for work I didn't do. I'm not overcharging for goods and services I'm delivering. I'm charging a market price with a little bit of profit. So therefore I can grow my company. And it says here in, in scripture, in Proverbs that I will walk secure. But if you are taking advantage of people, if you are scamming people, what? You're gonna be found out, you're gonna be embarrassed, and you'll be out of business. So question for you is, do you wanna look over your shoulder doing your business, doing your, your, your career, your daily walk? Or do you wanna be able to look at people straight in the eye? Look at yourself, the man or woman in the mirror, know that you're doing right, and you're good and you're secure. Number four, the wage of the righteous. What does that mean? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 16. The wage of the righteous leads to life, the gain of the wicked to sin. So in other words, whatever you acquired, the money, your profit, your wages, it will compound over time. But if you are doing wrong by people, it is going to lead you down to ruin. It's gonna compound negatively, or compound positively, the choice is yours. Number five, the blessing of the Lord makes rich. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. It reads like this. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. So in other words, God says, if you're blessed, you're going to be rich. And if God, if it's truly a blessing to you, there's no, oh my gosh, there's no shame to it. I can't believe I got this. Now, you might have your own personal Desire saying, listen, I, I need to grow to be able to receive this blessing because there's so many faith-based people, there's so many people I run into churches that refuses to receive a blessing. Why? You know, uh, one of the biggest challenges we have on this YouTube channel is many believers, many people who are faith-based, believe they can't be a millionaire. This is be, it's easier for us to be broke. Because <laughs> they, they think from a resource, many of them think from a resource standpoint that you, by ga you gaining resources, by you gaining profit and revenue and money, by you becoming wealthy, right? You think by doing so, somebody else is losing. <laughs> okay? So from, from a resource standpoint, you think that resources are limited. Wait a minute. Don't you believe in God? Don't you believe that he owns all the cattle and all the hills and the, every, he owns all of these resources? So why do you think you can steal from God? It's all God's, right? So why do you think when you're gaining and creating profit and you're becoming wealthy, you're taking from somebody else? That's a limitation that you have in your belief system. Because scripture also says that God delights in the prosperity of his people. So when you're looking at this, the blessing of the Lord makes you rich. So if you feel that your career or your business or your operations is from the Lord and it's blessed, guess what? By default, he will then allow you to become rich. And there is nothing wrong. There's no sorrow to it. So receive your blessing. Now, here's another test. God says, what you going to do with it, though? <laughs> How are you going to steward over the career, the business, the resources, the blessings I've given you? Are you just going to be selfish and give it to yourself? Or are you going to pass that and pay it forward and give it to other people? We'll see. By the way, let's take a quick affirmation pause break here. And put an affirmation in, in the comment section. If you believe at this time that you feel that God is working in your life, a very mighty and powerful thing, put there in the comment section below. I am receiving a blessing. I am receiving a blessing. Or I am a blessing. Put those affirmation in the comment section below. If you're with us at this point in the video and you believe that God is working in your life, put those affirmations below. All right, last couple ones. The righteous walks straight. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 11. Verse 5, it reads like this. The righteous of the blameless keeps his way straight, but the wicked falls by his own wickedness. You know, I'm, I'm actually teaching my guys who've never been to Las Vegas before. If you feel that you're righteous, if you really want to honor God, if you really want to make sure you come to Las Vegas to attend a conference that can give you the skills and the know-how to capture the essence of what it is that you're about to do in business as an entrepreneur to be a king in the marketplace, a queen in the marketplace. You gotta anticipate that when you're walking the straight path on the Las Vegas Strip, you got people from all sides of the street offering you solicitations to go to a strip club, to go gamble. Uh, they offer you prostitutes. It's all right on Las Vegas. It's obvious. That's why they call it Sin City. 
What's the old saying back in the day? What goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. What goes on in Vegas actually goes on YouTube. <laughs> actually goes on in Vegas, goes on social media. But if you're walking down this path, I remember walking down this path with Rudy Ortiz, who's the man who uh, ushered me and blessed me and led me to the Lord. And he uh, was the early teacher of mine in understanding the Bible in a men's breakfast on a Saturday morning at 8 a.m. And we, we were walking down the strip. We we're just taking in the sights. Wow, man, what a massive building. What happened? Look at that. That's the Mirage. Wow, that's the Venetian. Wow, that's the Paris. That's uh, New York, New York. And next thing you know, these guys come up to it. Right, they, go, they go right past me. They go right to him. Boom, boom, boom. They hand him cards. Hey, man, we got a limo right now. We can go to a strip club. <laughs> you know, they say a couple things I don't want to repeat right now on this uh, YouTube channel. Because I know sometimes kids are watching these things. But it was nothing Christ-like. It was nothing God-like. It was all wicked. And because Rudy was walking in righteousness, he's walking straight, he didn't stray, he didn't feed into any of those temptations. Why? At the same time, too, I'm there. Okay, we're not feeding on our temptations. We're not walking this path alone, which is another proverb down the road okay, I want to share with you. You got to read Proverbs, man. I just love this. Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. But the righteous will always walk straight. If you're in your business endeavors and somebody tries to tempt you to cut corners and to, to do things to get you to profit sooner or faster by cheating the system, by, by cheating, I'm going to say that there's ways to improve. There are always ways to improve. There's always new laws that needs to be written or certain laws that needs to be uh, uh, taken away. But there's always ways to improve. I didn't say that you couldn't improve. I'm just saying if it teeters on the point where it's immoral, or it's lacking righteousness. Those are things that you need to discern and stay away from because the righteous walks straight. And if you walk straight, you, my friends, back to number five, you will receive the blessing of God and he will make you rich. Last but not least, what happens when the wicked dies? You get all this money, right? You obtained all this money, but you've been wicked about it. What happens when those who obtain money, but they're wicked and they die? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11, verse seven. It reads like this. When the wicked dies, his hope will perish. And the expectation of wealth perishes too. Now, if you're looking to say, I really want to build wealth the God way, the faith-based way, you just got to understand, uh, for example, story that was brought up in Money Explained episode, Bernie Madoff, okay? He led one of the worst Ponzi schemes, scamming people out of billions, okay? He uh, basically died in prison. Make a long story short. But his children were so disappointed that even one of his sons committed suicide because he could not bear to say I'm a Madoff because of my father. He committed suicide. Okay? And his other children. Listen, you think the other children are inheriting a good name? Sure, they got wealthy growing up. Sure, they got wealthy. They, they lived in the trappings of being a billionaire. Their father was making money, money in a very wicked way. The children didn't know about it. But when they did find about it, it's not like they were inheriting any money. It's not like they were inheriting a good name. Matter of fact, change their name. So the question for you is, as you're building wealth, as you're building generational wealth, as you're building your, your, your path to become a first-generation cash flow, faith-based millionaire, the question for you is, how are you going about doing it. Now, there's no such thing as get rich quick. I totally agree. But there's nothing around doing things righteously and doing it with speed. Because success loves speed. That's my own personal interpretation of that, right? It's not a proverb, just me. Okay? Success loves speed because you learn along the process. You're able to figure out what you don't know and what you do know along the process, what skills you need to improve. You're able to find results faster. And once you do it again, you do it better again a second time, or you do it better again a third time, or better again a fourth time around. So I'm not saying for you not to be diligent in your work, because there's another scripture in the Bible that says that a man diligent in his work will sit amongst kings. He will not be around mere men. If you're diligent in your work, I didn't say for you to be lazy and kick back. Oh, I mean, you know, Matt said, you know, with the interpretation of Proverbs, said, well, get rich quick is never overnight. I'm, I didn't say overnight. True, correct. Get rich quick overnight. But I didn't say you can't do it fast. So don't let me be a crutch for you to say, I don't work with speed, I don't work with intentionality, and I don't work with diligence. Please incorporate those things and watch what happens. Watch what God does in your life when you incorporate those things. You stay away from these things that will cause you to get rich quick and cause you to rise and fall 
right away. That being said, guys, let me know your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me. What are some of your favorite proverbs here as it relates to understanding that the righteous does not get rich quick overnight, but they walk straight path and there's a season for all things. And you, you might be in a season right now of planting or harvesting, cultivating, I don't know, but uh, love to know what you are doing. Put it in the comment section below if you care to share. Before I let you go, I would love for you to check out this video here. My man, Daniel Kwok, who is actually doing it right in the real estate investing world. My interview together with him, we went from zero to $8 million. Please check out the video here, Daniel Kwok of the Kwok Brothers YouTube channel. And please check out this video here of three biblical habits that can help you become a first generation cash flow faith-based millionaire. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Mind Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Mind Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to live smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys.